With warmer weather settling in for the summer, keeping cool is on everyone's mind. From greenhouses to poultry farms, evaporative cooling systems are at the heart of heat abatement strategies. Hi, I'm Alyssa with South End Organics. Evaporative cooling can be achieved in several ways, but all of them involve using water to eliminate heat from the air that it is in contact with. These strategies date back as far as ancient Egyptian civilizations, simply placing a large water reservoir near an air inlet. Thankfully, research and innovation have allowed today's systems to advance far past those used in the pyramids, but they're still based on the same principles. Essentially, water in its liquid form uses heat energy from the air to be converted to a gas. This produces a steady stream of air that's cooler than the ambient temperature around it. The result? Incredibly effective cooling using only 10% of the energy needed for mechanical cooling systems. Evaporative cooling also improves a space's air quality by moving fresh, clean air into it rather than circulating the same existing air, which may contain pollutants. In most cases, evaporative cooling systems work by pulling warm air through a water-soaked air cell. This can be done by motor-driven fans or natural ventilation. The air cells are moistened by continuous flowing water delivered via water pumps. This allows the air moving through them to be cooled by 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. However, these systems are known to create high humidity conditions when not combined with adequate airflow and wind speed within your houses. This is why heat abatement is such a dynamic practice. When managed improperly, humidity within a house can prevent birds from cooling adequately and produce excessively damp litter. But when it's done correctly, in combination with proper ventilation, evaporative cooling can help you produce healthy and profitable flocks despite summer stressors. So how do you get the most from your evaporative cooling systems? First, like we talked about before, is using this method in combination with proper ventilation. Second is maintaining that water flow. This means keeping an adequate amount of water circulating, but ensuring that the water is fresh and clean to prevent algae growth and buildup. Choosing the correct material for your air cells is also an important factor. When our greenhouse was built, we installed corrugated cellulose paper cooling cells. At the time, those worked really well for us. This year, almost five years later, we replaced them with another style, a cellulose pad coated with acrylic polymer glue to protect them from UV and mechanical damage. But these are only two examples of the varying options available. Last, but certainly not least, is maintaining your pads after they're installed. It's important to pay attention to anything that may obstruct the flow of air through the pads, such as hard water or dust buildup and mechanical damage of any kind. These obstructions reduce the amount of air cooling the pads may be capable of. Keeping cool is on everyone's mind during the summer months, even your birds. A properly maintained evaporative cooling system can make this daunting task on your farm much easier and efficient when managed correctly. As always, thank you for watching, and if you haven't already, click the subscribe button below. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to Alan Reynolds at alan at southlandorganics.com.